Uh, we have one more talk before we break for lunch uh, with another uh, very intriguing topic uh, on the evolution of flight, and that's going to be given to us by John Ferry. My name is John, and unlike the other speakers today, I'm not a scientist, I'm an artist. And I run this uh, animation studio called Stated Clearly. And what I do is I work with scientists and educators, and we make animations that teach things like genetics. We have this animation, what is DNA and how does it work? What is the evidence for evolution? Can science explain the origin of life? And we take these complex scientific concepts, simplify them, and put them into these videos that, uh, you know, middle school and high school students can understand. And you can watch them all for free at statedclearly.com. You can use them in your classrooms and lectures and give them as homework assignments and all kinds of stuff. You can even have me come and present to your class if you want. I love doing that kind of thing. For the past, uh, about last summer, I started working with these two guys. Um, they're specialists in bird evolution. Uh, Richard Crum at Yale is has studied the origin of feathers and the anatomy of feathers, how they grow. And Ken Dial has done a lot with uh, how the mechanics of a bird wing work aerodynamically. And they've been working with me over the past year to, to create a series of lessons that I do. I've been doing at Shintimini Wildlife Center uh, last summer on the evolution of flight. And so you're going to get a super fast forward version of that lesson here today. So flight has evolved four times in the animal kingdom. Can anybody just, just start spouting them off? Which, which groups of animals have independently evolved the ability to fly? Dinosaurs. Insects. Insects. Someone said dinosaurs, which would be birds. Bats. Uh, bats. Fish. The last one is pterosaurs. Pterodactyls. They're extinct, so it's kind of a trick question. But uh, so evolution is. Flight has evolved four times independently, and obviously we're here because we love birds, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. And when Darwin first published the theory of evolution, he didn't really know exactly where birds fit into the, the tree of life. Birds are very strange, the only animals with feathers. They also have scales, which kind of makes you think maybe they're related to reptiles, but then they're warm-blooded, which most reptiles are not warm-blooded. So, very strange animal for Darwin to have to deal with. Um, when coming up with the theory of evolution. Well, since this time, we've learned a whole lot about the evolution of birds. And I like to try and sum it all up, all this data, in what I call fuzz to flight evolution. And there are three main lines of, uh, of evidence for fuzz to flight evolution. The first thing we're going to look at is that wings are modified arms. It's kind of hard to imagine that when you look at a wing. They're such bizarre structures, but they have modified arms. Feathers are not just for flying, which is really important because they're such complex structures, the ones that birds use for flying now, but that's not actually why they originally evolved. And then thirdly, we'll take a look at the fossil record. So wings are modified arms. Doesn't look like it when you, when you look at a wing, but if you take away the feathers and the skin, and compare them to our own arms, they are pretty much identical to ours. We've got one bone, two bones, wrist bones, and then what kind of look like hand bones. And you'll notice that in this bird, which is the top one obviously, those, those bones, if you're skeptical that those bones, maybe they're, maybe they're not really hand bones, I, I sympathize with you because they look very strange. But check this out. This is a chicken developing in the egg, and they start out in early stages of development with arms, three-fingered arms with claws on them. And those, those fingers continue to grow and come and fuse together until we get the chicken wing that we're all so familiar with during football season. <laughs> and it's, it's very clear when we look at this development that these are, in fact, modified arms. Now, if you still don't believe me, that's okay, because there's more. This is a, an ostrich wing. And ostriches actually still have claws that grow on their wings. They only have two of them. The third one's gone. But they still have the first and second claw on their wings, which is pretty incredible. And then, of course, four years after Darwin published 
his book on evolution, The Origin of Species. This creature was discovered and described actually by uh, one of Darwin's rivals, someone who did not accept his theory of evolution. And this is Archaeopteryx, probably the most famous fossil in the world. It's, it looks very much like a dinosaur. It's definitely some sort of reptile type creature. And when, when we look at its wings, which were fully feathered, we see that it has three claws, uh, three fingers and three claws. So, What does all this mean? What does all this data mean that, that bird wings are modified arms? <coughs> well, the really important practical take home is unfortunately, Pegasus is a fraud. <laughs> you cannot have a quadruped that also has wings. You can, you can only have four total. Now, secondly, feathers are not just for flying. Um, this here is a, is a bird of paradise, and he's using his feathers to attract a mate, which the ladies like that, apparently in his species. Uh, Richard Crumb uh, once said, proposing that feathers evolved for flight is like proposing that fingers evolved to play the piano. It's just too complex of a, of a behavior for natural selection to have been able to take and form feathers just for that flight. So feathers originally evolved for something else, but what? What else are feathers good for? Well, yeah, insulation is one of the major ones. That's in my first slide. Also, communication. This guy is trying to attract a mate here. This bird is also communicating, but telling someone to back off. Doesn't want to get its picture taken. This bird is using his feathers as armor. And we don't think of feathers as being good armor, but they're amazing um, armor, actually. There's no nerves in them, there's no blood in them, and, and uh, in this case, this red-tailed hawk is hunting a rattlesnake, coaxing it to bite its feathers so it can then kill the rattlesnake. Really tricky. Bird. This bird is using her feathers to collect water that she's going to bring back to the nest. She opens up her feathers to collect that water, and her, her babies will drink from her, from her feathers. And this bird is doing the exact opposite, closing its feathers nice and tight to stay dry. So there are all sorts of reasons that feathers, basic, simple feathers, could have evolved. Um, Richard Crumb studied how feathers grow. And feathers start out as little spikes that come out of the skin. And he proposed that the original feathers actually were just spikes, kind of similar to what you'd see on the back of, a, of an iguana. They have these, these tubular scales on their backs. And so the, the very first feathers would have been spikes. Uh, after that, we would have these spikes that can split and open up into these hair-like structures, these fuzz-like structures. And these are what we find still today on a lot of baby birds, including um, this one here, a cassowary, baby cassowary. And these are the, the simplest feather types. So feathers seem to have evolved just as a basic body covering for camouflage and protection against little abrasions and whatnot. They continue to refine and then develop new functions. The feathers on the back of this bird of paradise are, they look like a, it looks like a complicated mess, but each, each feather is actually very simple in their structure. And we think that birds began to, to use their feathers more for communication. And as that started happening, the feather shapes began to refine. These spikes would open up into different shapes when they opened up. Um, and they were useful for different things, different types of communication. And then finally, these communication feathers were co-opted for flight. So finally, um, towards the end of the evolution of feathers, we actually have these really complex flight feathers that develop that can actually be used for gliding and then flying. So there's, there's kind of the, the progression there. And birds continue to find new uses for their feathers. <laughs> so that, who knows where evolution will take them in the future? lovely little parrot here. So, now we look at the fun stuff, the fossil record. Archaeopteryx was an incredible fossil find because it, it showed us that birds came from these reptile-like ancestors. And, you know, we already looked at the hands. They have teeth, so they're very unlike modern birds, very similar to dinosaurs. 
and they have these long bony tails, which birds today do not have long bony tails. They have long feathers sometimes, but not long bones in their tails. But Archaeopteryx doesn't tell us where feathers got their start because he's already fully feathered. And so for that, we need to look at other theropod dinosaurs. This here is Sinoceropteryx, and it's a fuzzy little dinosaur that was uh, found in China recently, in 1996, I believe. And its body is completely covered in fuzz. Here's my recreation of Sinoceropteryx. <laughs> we know he ate lizards because we find them in the stomach. This here is Eutyrannus. And you can kind of see this is his skull, and he looks like a T-Rex. <coughs> He's closely related to T-Rex. And on his, all over his body, you can see tiny little feather, well, feather filaments in the stone. And here we have, i outlined those for you. He might have looked something like this when he was alive. I didn't, I didn't do that drawing, but giant animal. He could definitely eat a human if it was alive with us. And this one here is Epidexipteryx, probably my favorite fossil of all time because he has the fuzz on his chest, but on his tail, he has these beautiful display feathers. He's got four of them. And the beautiful thing about Epidexipteryx is he predates Archaeopteryx by somewhere between 2 to 18 million years. So this is a, an amazing specimen showing us how feathers first evolved. And we do not find feathers on his arms, so it doesn't look like he flew, though there is some evidence he might have had bat-type structures for gliding. Um, there, there were skin, not feathers. So this is a very bizarre animal, really, really fascinating. Sinorithosaurus shows that he has wing-like feathers on his arms, but they're still kind of more of a, a fuzz style. And even Velociraptor, we now know, because so many of his relatives were fully feathered, we don't have enough preservation on an actual raptor skeleton. But we do find on his ulna, on the, this arm bone right here, we find quill knobs, which tell us that Velociraptor actually was feathered. And this is a, a John Conway, who was an artist out in the UK, did this painting of Velociraptor fully feathered, how, how he might very well have looked when he was actually alive. Um, Mark, Mark Norrell at the American Museum of Natural History said, if animals like Velociraptor were alive today, our first impression would be that they were just like, they were, sorry, they were just very unusual looking birds, which is very different than what we get from Jurassic Park. But. So that is fuzz to flight evolution. And again, what does all this mean? We see these dinosaurs developing fuzz, eventually developing flight feathers. Well, if it looks like a duck, and if it quacks like a duck, it's probably a dinosaur. 